are you, babe? Say, how about... Ouch! Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. You all remember Metro Golden Mayor's famous Maisie picture. Now, in just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Ann Southern. But first, your announcer. <laughs> Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the man said. Maisie Revere. I was born in Brooklyn in 1900 and... Well, I was born in Brooklyn. You know, there's an old saying that clothes make the man. But I got a little story that proves that clothes also make the woman, if you know what I mean. It all started back in London, England. I'd gone over there with a musical review called Humpty Dumpty. Well, if you think Humpty Dumpty fell off a wall, you should have seen our flop. So there I was, stranded in London, and broke as usual. Luckily, I managed to get a job as a model at one of them hoity-toity dress saloons. Uh, I mean, salons that catered strictly to women born with silver spoons in their mouths. Well, one day, a couple of us mannequins were modeling gowns for one of them stuffy title dames. And uh, this, ladies five, is a creation of which Turnbull and Company is especially proud. I should like to call your ladyship's attention to the plunging neckline. I shouldn't think it would be necessary to call anyone's attention to the neckline, Mr. Turnbull. Plunging, indeed. It looks to me as if it were torpedoed. Remove it from my sight at once. Oh, but your ladyship, this is an exact replica of what has been worn in America. Mr. Turnbull, what is considered quite the thing in the colonies does not interest me in the least. Remember, I am an Englishwoman, not an Indian. And if you have nothing more suitable to show me, I'll oh, just... We do, your ladyship. We've just scads and scads and scads of the very latest, the very, 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 very latest. Uh, next, please, next, please. Come on, come on, come on now. But while the next model paraded in front of her royal hastiness, I peeked through the curtains to get a closer look. And this gown, your ladyship, we consider poetry, sheer... Oh, I consider it waste, sheer waste. Kindly remove it from my sight. <laughs> yes, Your Ladyship, at once. Nothing seemed to please this warmed-over Yorkshire pudding. Her reaction to each gown model was the same. One nostril went up like she was trying to smell something, and the other one looked like she had just smelled it. Too bad, too, because she was young and beautiful. Next, please. Miss Rivera. Her Ladyship is waiting. Oh, coming, Mr. Tangler, coming. Ah, your lish. Here we have the very ultimate in gowns for la danse. Chic, revealing, and uh, yet it uh, exercises a certain restraint. I should like to examine it a bit closer. Come here, girl. Oh, sure, Lady Smith. If you don't mind, girl, my name is not Smith. It is Lady Smythe. Oh, sorry, forgive me. I mean, forgive me, Lady Smythe. Miss Rivera, if you don't mind... I believe her ladyship would like to see the back. Oh, right, though. There you are, Lady Smythe. Ah, oh, I see you are impressed. Nauseated is more descriptive of my reaction, Mr. Turnbull. Nauseated. That gown leaves hardly anything to the imagination. But your ladyship, after all, an evening gown is your... Is like a picket fence. It's supposed to protect the property and not obstruct the view. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, uh, very well put, Miss Rivera, very well indeed. Don't. don't you think so, Your Ladyship? If you really want to know the vulgarity of this person herself... Uh, a little fur chapeau also comes with it. Yes, Your Ladyship, and it's just your type, too. Skunk. <gasps> well, I've never been so insulted in all my life. Well, maybe you should be, dearie, so you'll know how it feels to take it instead of just dishing it out. Miss Rivera, 
Her ladyship is a customer here. I demand that this uncouth person be discharged at once. You do not have to demand, kiddo. I know I'm getting the gate, and I needed this job, too. But I also need my self-respect, too. Self-respect, indeed. And what would you Americans know about respect? Well, that cuts it. Now, sit back and listen, Smitty. Mr. Turnbull, are you going to stand by and hear me insulted? Oh, frankly, I hadn't planned on it, Your Ladyship. But now that you've mentioned it, I do believe I'd rather enjoy it. <laughs> Carry on, Miss Rivera. Aye, <laughs> aye, chum. Mr. Turnbull, I will never purchase another thing in this shop. You never have, Your Ladyship. Well, I've never been talked to in this way in my life. You know, oh, so that's well. just the trouble with your circle. Ever since you were born, you've been traveling in one. What? You never gave anything, just I... took what you thought was coming to you. In other words, you and your kind are just, just... Parasites? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Turnbull. Well, keep at it, Miss Rivera. You're doing quite well. Or, uh, as you say in America, you're uh, cooking with petrol. Hmm. Lady Smythe, I've been around quite a bit. I've seen a lot of this world. And when you really get down to it, the only difference between rich people and poor people is that rich people are only poor people with money. Are you quite finished, Miss Rivera? Quite. Thank you. Good day. Oh, oh. oh well, I, I guess I might as well get off my soapbox, Mr. Turnbull. I'm, I'm sorry I ruined the sale for you. Not at all, Miss Rivera. I enjoyed the, uh, <laughs> the ruining immensely. <laughs> Well, I didn't mean to lay it on so thick, but... Oh, but if I may be permitted to make a comment, some of those things that you implied were quite true. But why you were haranguing Lady Smythe, Miss Rivera, I had an idea which I would like very much to discuss with you later. Later? Why not now? Oh, come, come. We can't possibly discuss it now. It's, it's five o'clock. It's, it's time for tea. Oh, yes. One mustn't miss tea, must one? <laughs> How would this table do, Monsieur Turnbull? Ideal, Henri, ideal. Uh, don't you think so, Mr. Rivera? Well, um, frankly, I'd feel less conspicuous in a corner someplace, Mr. Turnbull. Everybody seems to be staring at us right here in the center of the joint. I, I mean, restaurant. Well, that's exactly why I asked Henri to seat us here. You are, uh, constructed to, uh, attract the eye. This Henri. Ah, very certainement, monsieur. Oh, gracias, monsieur. Well, uh, now that we are seated, Miss Rivera, shall we order first? First? Um, Mr. Turnbull, I, I think I should set you straight before we go any further. Set me straight? I... I don't believe I understand, my dear. Well, I... Uh, uh, would monsieur and mademoiselle care to order now? Well, mademoiselle ain't finished yet. Mr. Turnbull, um, about these clothes I'm wearing. Beautiful, Miss Rivera, positively beautiful. The very finest ever created by Turnbull and Company. And on you, my dear, they're positively stunning. <laughs> N'est-ce pas, Henri? Ah, uh, tout à fait ravissant, mademoiselle. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Turnbull... I agreed to wear this outfit in your shop because you insisted on it. And, well, I'm grateful for a chance to wear nice things. I, I'm, I'm very grateful. Oh, come, 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 my dear. You really owe me nothing. Good. Now that that's cleared up, let's eat. Uh, <clears throat> well, I, I believe we shall order now, Henri. Would you care for a spot of tea, Miss Rivera? Oh, no. If it's all the same to you, I think I'd prefer a drip of coffee. Very well. One drip of coffee. I'll just have tea. Ah, uh, oui, monsieur. Hmm. See, Mr. Turnbull. An outfit like this is one of the weaknesses of the weaker sex. <laughs> I wish I could always wear clothes like this. You can, Miss Rivera. That is what I want to talk to you about. Well, so long, Mr. Turnbull. Oh, no, no, please, Miss Rivera. No, don't be foolish. This may be a surprise to you, Sonny. But there are certain items that are not included in Lend-Lease. Miss Rivera, look at me. Do I seem like the kind of man that your, your, your insinuation suggests? No. But just because the tea kettle don't whistle don't mean that there ain't something cooking inside. Oh, Miss Rivera, you are a very attractive woman. You wear clothes divinely. My clothes. Uh-huh. 
Now, when you entered this restaurant, you caused quite the effect that I had anticipated. The ladies here, they thought you were something other than a professional mannequin. Well, the ladies weren't the only ones who thought that. And the first thing that came into all those women's minds was, where did she get those clothes? That was the second thing that came into their minds. Miss Revere, how would you like to wear clothes like that always? Go to the most exclusive hotels and resorts and have more than enough money not to have to worry about tomorrow. Hmm. No strings? No strings. What's the gimmick? See? Gimmick? What do I have to do to win this British quiz program? Call Miss Revere. Since the war, barely enough customers have patronized my salon to pay the overhead. Mm -hmm. At one time, the rich came to my salon from all over England. Well, you can't expect that anymore, Mr. Turnbull. Now, the gasoline, I mean, petrol is racing. and even the rich can't afford to travel to Turnbull and Company. Exactly. But there is no reason why Turnbull and Company can't travel to the rich. Oh, you mean sort of a traveling salesman? No, a traveling saleswoman, Miss Revere. In other words, you. Me? <laughs> I never sold clothes in my life. You wouldn't have to sell. You'd just travel around at my expense to where the rich congregate. Oh, and all I have to do is casually mention where each garment I'm wearing is from and the price. Exactly. And oh. when the ladies notice how the eyes of their attentive swains and husbands wander from their drab selves to <laughs> your, to your... Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. well, go on, Mr. Turnbull. I, I think I see what you mean. Well, uh, Vanity will find a way to get to my shop in London and to purchase replicas of the clothes that you have literally been modeling. Oh, and for this I'll have all the things I ever wanted to wear. Yes. However, there's a... Uh, one slight catch. Well, this is where I came in. I mean, Miss Revere, frankly, many of the best families in England, they don't quite understand Americans. No. You're an actress, I know. I, I saw you, I saw the show you were in. Oh, so you were the one. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, if you would sort of act as if you were British. Oh. Well, well what do you think of this? Oh, how did you go, flute old Vino, what not? Just received word from home that Peter and Nata were run down and killed by a tram. Well, who's the tennis? <laughs> good. <laughs> Very good. Well, Miss Revere, what do you say? Do you accept? Well, um... Here's your tea, Monsieur Turnbull. And your coffee, Mademoiselle. So sorry to inconvenience you, old chap. But I should prefer tea. Tea? Is Mademoiselle changing her order? No, just my nationality. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. <laughs> Lord Deveridge, I was just in the process of sorting the morning post. There's the usual letter for you, your lordship. From Lady Smythe, I presume. Uh, yes, sir. Tear it up. But, uh, destroy it, sir. Oh, but 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 it's scented. <gasps> oh, with the most exotic perfume. Very well, Clark. You may smell it a few more times and then tear it up. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, dear. My only purpose in coming to this dull resort was to escape the obvious marital net that untiring woman seems determined to draw me into. However, I really didn't come here to burden you with L'Affaire Smythe. Would you be kind enough to telephone the groom at the stables and ask him to saddle up that grey stallion, uh, Firefly? Like a good fellow, hmm? Firefly, your lordship? Isn't he a bit, uh, spirited? Quite. Certainly your social star can conjure up some activities more blood-tingling than whist or pin the tail on the donkey. Oh, but your lordship, Kensington Lodge has always been a vacation resort for, uh, well, people of more advanced years. Perhaps. 
that if some of your aged guests don't do something besides just sitting around under trees, they're liable to take root. Oh, I'd give ten pounds right now if I could feast my eyes on an exciting, beautiful woman again. Porter, you be careful with I my luggage. Say, my I'm entire wardrobe consisting of 34 complete ensembles from Turnbull and Company, 326 Glory Lane, London, all for Asian's made free, is in there. Clark, I owe you ten pounds. <gasps> oh, she does seem quite a attractive, your lordship. Quite. The American G.I.s had an expression that aptly described that particular type of attractiveness. I believe the phrase was... Um, <whistles> or uh, words to that effect. Oh, <clears throat> come, come, chaps. Kindly deposit my luggage at the desk and scamper out of my limousine and help my chauffeur and footman. I mean, feetman. <laughs> I have two, you know. Do help them, will you? Yes, it wants, madam. Oh, Thank you, madam. Oh, not at all, my good chap. Surely you've been given five-pound tips before. Five-pound tip, your lordship? She must be very wealthy, or American. Hard to tell what she is, with that accent. Yes, set down my hat box here, boy. And be careful. It's just put of my new chateau. <laughs> I mean chapeau. Pardon me, your lordship. Uh, yes, madam, uh, what may we do for you? Oh, uh, good afternoon, clerk. My good friend, Mr. Turnbull of Turnbull and Company, creators of the very utterly art and feminine apparel, established in 1925, wired ahead, I do believe, for accommodations. Don't you know? Oh, oh uh, but, but of course, Your Grace. Oh, no. No, I'm Maisie, silly. Maisie Revere. I mean, yes, Lady Revere. If he failed to send the wire, I should be livid, but absolutely livid. Uh, Lady Revere? Oh, I do hope there's been no mistake. But, but here's Mr. Turnbull's wire. Kindly book a suite for a Lady Maisie Revere. Oh, gee. The telegraph company left out a comma. It was supposed to say, book a suite for a lady, comma, Maisie Revere. I believe you dropped your glove, Lady Revere. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, you were saying, Lady Revere, something about a comma, I believe. Oh, yes, yes, I... I was saying that should I like it here, I should be very glad to come again. <laughs> Didn't you know? Oh, I see. I'm I quite see. certain that you'll enjoy your stay here, Lady Rivia. Um, would you think it too presumptuous of me if I were to ask you to join me for tea? Well, aren't you the pushy one? I am not in the habit of partaking of tea with strangers, my good fellow. Oh. Well, I, um, I'm Lord Anthony Deverish, Lady Rivia. Oh, well, now that we've been introduced, I suppose it's all right. Well, that's very charming of you. Uh, shall we say out on the terrace, um, about 4.30-ish? Oh, well, I'm, I'm practically parched, Lord Deverage. Could we perchance make that 3.30-ish? <laughs> delighted, my dear girl, delighted. I merely suggested a later hour to give you ample time to uh, shower or tub. Oh, well, I'm much too, too parched to shower or tub. I believe this time I shall just basin. Uh, yes. Basin. <laughs> you have a delightful sense of humor, Lady Rivia. I, I'm frightfully glad we've met. Frightfully. Oh, frightfully, don't you know. <laughs> I just checked with the housekeeper, and I believe your suite is all ready for occupancy. I shall have your luggage brought up immediately. Oh, thank you, my good man. Here, this is for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you indeed. <laughs> I was just going upstairs to my suite to change. Lady Rivia, uh, perhaps we can ride up together in the same lift, hmm? Oh, well, don't you think it might be safer in the elevator? Elevator? Mm. But, oh, isn't that the term used in America for, for lift? Oh, yes. Now that you mention it. I'm afraid I've been going to too many of those cinemas made out there in the colonies. You know, where a girl meets a man one minute and... Yes, and then the, then the next minute he invites her to dine. Yes. Things just don't happen that way in real life. Why, sometimes he doesn't even know what she really is. How true. Mm. And then scarcely two minutes after they've met, the boy and the girl always subconsciously find themselves calling each other by their first names. Yes. So untrue to real life. What? Quite untrue. Yes. Well, I'll meet you at 3.30 for tea, Tony. And I'll be waiting impatiently, Maisie. <laughs> From the first moment Tony and me sipped our tea together, I knew I was a real gone gal. I forgot that I was just a clothes horse for Turnbull Company, because in the week that followed, Tony treated me like a thoroughbred. 
Maybe it was the tender way he lifted me onto my horse every time we went riding. And the gentle way he arranged the cushions on my chair after I came back. Maybe it was because for the first time in my life I was treated like a lady, not like just a dame. Oh, I tried to tell him the truth about me several times. But somehow the subject always got changed, or maybe I didn't try hard enough. Anyway, I remember one afternoon out in the terrace I was having tea with Tony again. He didn't know it, but I was leaving the hotel that night. I'd wired Mr. Turnbull I was coming home and calling the whole arrangement off. Now, while I was sitting there at the table with Tony, I tried to think out the words to tell him that I was an all-American phony and hoped that maybe he would understand. Tea, Maisie? Hmm? Oh, you've been miles away. Don't you think it's time to come down to Earth? Yes, down to Earth. Tony. Yes, my dear? Tony, I... 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 Yes. Uh, I think I'll have a cup of tea. Oh, yes, certainly, my dear. You know, you, you seem a bit pale this evening. This tea will brace you up and make you feel like another person. Well, that's exactly my trouble, Tony. Since I've met you, I actually do feel like another person. Oh, Maisie, my darling, I... I was hoping that you thought that way. Because, well, since I've met you... Oh, please, I... Tony. Before you say anything, I'd, I'd like to ask you something. Oh, yes, my dear. Anything your heart desires. Anything. Tony... Yes, my dear. Would you... Would you... Yes? Uh, would you pass the lemon? Oh, certainly, my dear. Here. <clears throat> um, crump it? No, just squeeze it. Hmm? Yeah, um, Maisie, darling, are, are you sure that you're all right? Yes, Tony. I've got to tell you something that's been on my mind since... Since... That, that day. Then I have to tell you something, too, Maisie. I've changed my mind about those boy and girl films that they make in Hollywood. Maisie, Please, I... Tony. Me first. Oh, yes, naturally, my dear. Ladies first, huh? Well, that's the trouble, Tony. I'm not oh, a... Oh, re... hello, Tony. I do hope I'm not intruding. Pamela, where did you come from? In London, my dear chap. Just thought I'd drop by and claim my letters that you obviously haven't read. Oh. <laughs> what, Maisie, darling, what's happened? What in the world are you doing with that napkin over your face? Oh, the spoon. <coughs> it struck me in the eye when I drank my cup of tea. Oh, my poor <laughs> darling. Look, perhaps I can help. Help me see you. Yes, my dear. I should like to see Tony's <laughs> darling, too. Perhaps that will explain why you haven't replied to my letters. Oh, drink your friend away someplace and her, Tony, and don't bother about me. The spoon isn't stuck in there very deep, you know. Oh, don't be ridiculous, my darling. I wouldn't want any infection to set in. There, now let Tony remove the napkin, hmm? There's a brave girl. There. I do hope it's nothing trivial. <gasps> you! Hello. Pamela, have you and Lady Revere met? Lady Revere? Tony, this girl is an imposter. Pamela, I know you're just a jealous cat, but I will not have you talk in that manner to my fiancé. Fiancé? Tony, are you insane? No, kiddo, I'm the cookie that's insane. What? Maisie, your accent. Is this some sort of a game? Or... Obviously, darling. A game of blind men's bluff. You were obviously the blind man. Yeah, and you just called my bluff. Shall I do the honors, Lady Smythe? Or would you like to tell Lord Deveridge the sad story of Maisie Revere girl Schmo? Schmo? That, I believe, is a medican for stinker. Well, that's pretty close, honey. But if you don't mind, I'll take it from here. Very well, my dear. Tony, if you want me, and after this, this shop girl finishes her sordid tale, I imagine you will, I'll be at the airport. I'm flying back to London this afternoon. Goodbye. Goodbye, darling. Have a pleasant trip. And be careful that you don't fall off your broom. Maisie. Maisie, I just can't understand any of this. No. It's... No, when, when you're born with everything, I guess it ain't easy. What I've been trying to tell you all along, Lord Devers, is that I'm just a sort of traveling clothes horse for Turnbull and Company. Oh. So that's the reason for the continual 326 Drury Lane London alterations made by Lil Waiting. <laughs> yeah. It was strictly business till I met you. And then, well, I guess the moon got in my eyes. Maisie, you remember those American films we've been talking about? Yeah. Boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy finds girl. Well, you found me. Believe me, brother, right now I'd like to get lost. Well, I don't want you to get lost, Maisie. There are other films, too, remember? Uh, rich man meets shop girl. Rich man falls for shop girl. 
Shop girl goes back to shop. But the rich man follows her, and they live happily ever after. Yeah. <laughs> oh, honey, you'd never sell that to an American producer. It's too commercial. Are you, Maisie? I, I mean, uh, it, it, it wasn't only money in my case. Hmm? Oh, no, it wasn't. Well, uh, it wasn't only your rather extensive wardrobe, nor your physical beauty with me, either. Oh, I know what you're trying to say, Tony, and thanks. But it won't work. Why not? Well, you're caviar and me, I'm I'm pickle. <laughs> well, pickles and caviar go rather well together when they're eaten. Yeah, but after a while it can make you awful sick. I wouldn't mind. You won't mind that. No, Tony. We're from different worlds. And I just don't fit into yours. You're a lord, remember. And I'm not a lady. No, you're wrong, Maisie. You may not have that so-called blue blood in your veins. But you certainly are a lady. In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Cinderella and her prince charming. Maybe some of you are saying that I should have married Tony. See what happens. That marriage is a wonderful institution. Well, maybe marriage is a wonderful institution. But Tony and me, we, we just didn't talk the same language. There's one thing I did learn, though. It's always better to tell the truth than lies. At least when you tell the truth, you don't have to remember what you said. Well, get along there, feet. London is miles away. You have just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Lorene Tuttle, Ramsey Hill, Ben Wright, Marvin Miller, and Alec Harford. Jack McCoy speaking. Thank you.